is uh, August 2nd. Drop around to the Silver Creek crowd around noon. You'll have a wonderful gang. And pizza is usually served. Or they, everybody brings something. August 23, they're having a corn roast, an auction at noon. Can't beat that. Especially with the corn coming up. It's perfect right now. It's just wonderful. It's crispy. And don't cook it more than two minutes. People overcook corn. You don't really cook corn. You only heat it up good. Don't cook it over two minutes. It put it in at a boil. When it hits a boil again, two minutes. That's it. And uh, if it's over, uh, over a couple hours old, throw it out. <laughs> you, gotta, you have to go out and pick it yourself, you know, you should. Shirley Capine in Westfield does the job. She's the president over there. She has a wonderful husband who's uh, one of the, one of the uh, heats on the uh, fire police, and he does a great job. He plays a mean game of scat, I might add. He takes my money every time. Uh, September 14th, the group over there at the Westfield Seniors will be gathering Thursday, September 14th, at noon for the anniversary celebration they're having at the YWCA building, which is where they meet. Catered affair, price is eight, but the club pays five, can't beat that. Uh, make reservations. Talk to Dolores uh, Kaufman or Copine. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Kitchen committee will be Gladys Hess, I might add, a champion in our village. All right, I'm finished. They tell me I can't do the rest of the news because I've used up all my time and it's over and it's time for John Hamels who <coughs> shoots from the hip to come on. We'll have a public service announcement for you and we'll have John. I think. <laughs> That's an interesting public service announcement. <laughs> but teens do need help, and if you have a chance to help a teen out, give them a hand. Here's John. Good morning, John. Good morning, Reed, and good morning to our guests. Great morning. Glad you're here. Well, Reed, I've uh, been doing follow-up uh, as part of our uh, watch over the uh, government these days, and uh, I've talked about having folks write to our congressman, Brian Higgins, and checking in, as, you, as Reed often says, to our other um, political um, representatives, whether it's the state or the federal. But this, uh, this morning I printed up my letter from Brian Higgins. I got my own personal letter. I'm sure he wrote it. With his auto. With his auto. <laughs> I'm sure it was a staffer, but <clears throat> it did, it did uh, speak to some of the issues that I mentioned. And so I just want to paraphrase a few things, just letting folks know that you too can contact your congressman. And uh, Jeff's going to put the uh, address for the website here in a little bit, maybe even now, I don't know. But uh, there it is. Just, it's like magic, isn't it? There it is. Um, this is very simple. It's higgins.house.gov, and it brings up his website, and there's a button you can push to contact him. But anyways, I wanted to talk about uh, the reasons why I wrote to him, and it was about the things that Reed talks about, Medicare, Social Security, and so forth. And uh, without reading the whole letter, it basically talks about that he is uh, supporting things such as um, he says, I believe that our only responsible action is to reach an agreement for a long-term increase to the debt ceiling in conjunction with bipartisan commitment to reduce the debt by at least $4 trillion over the next decade. So it sounds to me like he's supporting raising the ceiling, but at the same time dropping the debt over time. Uh, he's talking about here... For every one dollar in, in increased revenue, for every three dollars in reduced spending, by making corporations, uh, wait a minute, hang on, yeah, making corporations that shelter uh, revenue offshore. No, 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 no. I'm jumping around here. It says he's trying to close loopholes for oil companies, corporations that shelter 
revenue offshore and hedge fund managers and letting the tax cuts for the wealthiest Americans expire. Uh, he talks about what's going on in Washington right now as political theater and that uh, because of this they're ignoring things like job creation and infrastructure investment. And now, the part that I was interested in, he says, the threat of federal government defaulting on its loans would potentially harm those who rely on Medicare and Social Security. For more than 70 years, Social Security has insured older citizens as well as persons with disabilities uh, that they can retire without fear and significant financial hardship. Likewise, Medicare has provided Western New Yorkers uh, prescription and medical treatment for 45 years. Uh, he's, and this is interesting, Reed. He said, these programs are not gifts. And this is interesting for us to think about. Uh, these are not gifts from the federal government. government. Beneficiaries have paid into these programs for decades. We've been paying for it all this time. Now when it's time to uh, get these things, it, Right, which right, they've, they've right, stolen. Right, it's gone. But and so he supported you. Uh, many since uh, they were young teenagers, and federal government has a commitment to keep these programs. Uh, he goes on to say that right now, what's going on in Washington is a dangerous game. It could be catastrophic, and it could lead to long-term economic volatility. Interest rates could skyrocket. Cost of borrowing for autos and home and mortgages and so so on would rise, and we know that the whole world's watching us, watching us right now because our economy uh, uh, really supports other economies throughout the world. And he goes on to say that he's going to fight for Western New Yorkers and all Americans and the other stuff. So uh, he did respond to me. I encourage you to, to do the same if you choose to. Uh, the websites are easy to get to. Um, the other interesting thing is after uh, we broadcast uh, about this last week, I'm sure it was us, Reed. All the, about half of, not all, but half of the uh, congressmen's websites in uh, Congress um, crashed. I'm sure because all our listeners started writing to their congressmen, but they filled up. They couldn't, they couldn't take on all the, uh, the traffic, so that was pretty uh, interesting. So people are, are, are responding, and I would encourage us, especially here in Chautauqua County, to let uh, Higgins know what we are thinking. Uh, just a couple other things to mention during my time here. If you're into rummage sales, over at the Children's Safety Village, a group that we've had here before, uh, from 8 to 4, this is Saturday morning now, uh, from 8 to 4 over at Route 394 at the Hughes Educational Center, BOCES, the, the Safety Village is having a huge rummage sale, and there's lots of good uh, bargains there. I was there yesterday helping out, and there weren't a lot of people, because it's the first day, a lot of times there aren't, but today you should be able to get a lot of great deals. Yeah, and it rained. And then, just as a side note, in case, do you ever read the uh, Chautauqua, Sta uh, Chautauqua Star? I'm not, not often, but I've read it. Well, guess who showed up in the Chautauqua Star this week? Uh, you and Bill. Me and Bill. Yeah. Okay, this is promoting the, uh, the uh, program that we're supporting uh, for literacy uh, this coming Friday from 5 to 6.30 up at 23 East, which is uh, 23 East 2nd Street in Dunkirk. And uh, we're uh, going to be playing up there. And uh, also, the following week, folks at the county home, we're going to be visiting Joe and the gang, and we look forward to seeing you then. I'm out of here. All right. About time. <laughs> 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 Thank you, uh, John. Uh, Doc Hamill's doing the job and uh, telling us about the, the tax. Uh, the, the taxes, you know, uh, they're, they're trying to, what they're going to do is rush us through at the last minute. Nobody will know what they're voting on, and they'll find out they just threw the seniors under the bus. They continued the huge tax breaks they give the corporations that don't even need them, and they, uh, they will never charge any more taxes. I don't know what your taxes are, but uh, most of us are paying about 20 to 30 percent federal income taxes, depending on how, how we're doing. Uh, you know how much the average billionaire pays? 12%. 12%. This is an outrage, and they're trying to increase that to at least what you and I pay, and the Republicans won't let them do it. Nope, not a penny tax increase for the people. This ain't the people, folks. This is a super rich we're talking about. 12%? Holy mackerel, something's wrong with this picture. I got a couple of people here. They know they're never going to get on the air. Uh, I've got with me Sarah Gudgeon. Is it Gudgeon or Gudgeon? Gudgeon. Gudgeon? Okay, I got it right. Good job. <laughs> okay, and I've got Richard Moore. 
And these folks I represent, now you squeeze up to me so they can get closer to me, and you too, Richard. <laughs> See, now they can get up closer to us. There you, put your mics on, too, All right. so we can hear you. Mm -hmm. Clip them on any old place there, and there you go. There we go. Okay. Now, uh, you uh, represent the uh, Veterans Hospital in Erie, and before we talk about it, whatever brought you up here and got you into that? Where were you raised? I was actually from Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland? Um, yeah, and a lot of my family, uh -huh. they were uh, veterans, either in Vietnam, in World War II. My grandpa told me stories about that. And uh -huh. also, uh, my brother, he went into the Marines when I was in high school. Uh -huh. So, um, I was studying advertising communications. I got an internship, actually, at the local VA in Erie. And I fell in love with it the day that I went there. I was sitting in a, in a chair, I remember, in this this little veteran, he was walking around and he passed me, handed out a support our troops little pamphlet with a poem about our veterans. And at that moment, I was pretty much hooked. So, yeah, yeah. yeah so well, that's what brought so, me in. So, so you love it up here? Love it, absolutely I bet, love I bet it. it's just yeah. gorgeous. Uh, yeah. How about you, Richard? Uh, what do you want me to call you, Richard, Rich, Dick? You can call me Richard. Richard, what? okay, Richard Moore, uh, a famous sculptor. <laughs> yes, yes, I wish. Uh, I uh, served in the Marine Corps. Uh -huh. uh, I'm from the Meadville, Erie area uh, uh -huh. most of my life. And, uh, and I went, started working at the hospital in 2007. Prior to that, I was uh, working for the VA Regional Office for Benefits in Pittsburgh. Uh, so I have about 25 years total service. Yeah, Mead Meadville is just halfway between here and Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. and it's a, it's a beautiful little town. Yes, I've got to scratch my back. <laughs> Do your thing. That's all right. <laughs> uh, so, uh, are you married, uh, Sarah? Am I married? No, no, oh, so I'm you're not. you're available. So <laughs> right here, right here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. He's been trying to do that for a while uh, too. How about so. you, Richard? You mean I haven't been trying to marry her? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I am married, and I have uh, two children and do both they, boys. Do they live nearby? Yes, they do. They're uh, corrections officers, uh -huh. and uh, I have three lovely grandchildren. Oh, aren't you? You're so lucky. You know, the greatest gift a senior can have besides good health, mm -hmm. is his children living nearby. Oh, it's wonderful. It's, mm -hmm. You see them every day. If my kids yeah. live within all of them, within two blocks, three oh, of them, wow. and mm -hmm. uh, three grandchildren, and see them every day. It's oh, just fantastic. That's worth it, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> all right, so now getting down to business here. Now, what is this uh, hospital you work with? What, 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 tell me a little bit about it, All right, Sarah. Well, we are the Erie VA Medical Center, and our uh -huh. mission is to provide exceptional health care to our local veterans. Um, mm -hmm. That's what we shoot for. That's what we aim for. So, uh, obviously, a lot of people know, you know, the different hot topics that are in in the news lately about post-traumatic stress disorder, homeless veterans, like you were mentioning earlier, uh, suicide prevention, all of that. So, we really take a detailed look in um, into what unique issues veterans face, and we design our programs based on that and based on veteran feedback. So, uh, I, I'd like to actually jump into homeless veterans program too, just to talk about that since that was mentioned a little bit earlier. Yeah, well, uh, there's uh, one thing I wanted to uh, mention before I oh, wander. Um, as you said, suicide. Now, what is causing this high rate of suicide among our veterans? It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's astronomical compared to other wars. Mm -hmm. Any idea? Well, you work with these folks. You should yeah. get some sort of input. Yeah. Now, I mean, for it's really on an individual basis. But when I when I speak with some of our uh, members of behavioral health, you know, there are just so many different contributing factors that go into that. Whether it's substance abuse, a lot of times that can happen with, um, you know, drinking too much or using drugs, using different things like that, or post traumatic stress disorder. I mean, this causes a, a huge personality shift too. You it know, makes just waste. crazy. Actually. Well, yeah. It's difficult. Uh, you can't cope as well. You don't. Mm -hmm. You don't know how to. I mean, th these have been just very traumatic experiences that they've gone through, and a lot of veterans returning now because of the t technologies and medical advances we have. A lot of them in previous wars might not be be necessarily returning, but um, we're because we're able to to save them, and uh, with the medical advances that we have, a lot of people are also coming back with traumatic brain injuries, different things that really just uh, affect your personality. They affect your mental health too. So, I mean, they, they're just there's not one reason why uh, veterans, you know, the suicide is so high among them. There's just all these different contributing factors well, going the, um, in there. The so. government, the VA, mm -hmm. 
basically for a long time has been ignoring this uh, post-traumatic stress uh, syndrome, just ignoring it, say it doesn't really exist. Mm -hmm. uh, but now they're beginning to say, well, we, we better check this one out, right? A 